two opportunities are the same. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Holy Spirit, if you do not teach us, we cannot know. We can act like we know. We may pretend like we know. But our results will show we did not get it. So there's no point guessing. We are not too proud. We humble ourselves before you this morning. And we ask that you teach us, guide us, instruct us. Even as we are here gathered to honor Pastor Pete Rock and the amazing work that you have done and are doing through him. I pray, oh God, that you will challenge our lives. Grant us the grace to leave this place more enlightened, to leave this place with greater spiritual understanding. In the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. The church was designed to be, among other things, a place, a reservoir of spiritual understanding. That means that the church is the only authorized institution on earth where God has vested his intelligence. The nations come to study God and to study his ways when they come to church. I was glad when they said unto me, let us go to the house of the Lord. And it's not for a ritual. Are we together? Two scriptures and then we'll go to the topic. Number one is Acts chapter 20 and verse 32. Acts chapter 20 and verse 32. It's projected, I believe you can see it. Please let's read together. One, two, read. And now, brethren, I commend you to God and to the word of his grace, which is able to build you up and give you an inheritance among them. This is a very powerful statement. The apostle is teaching here. And he says, brethren, I commend you. I hand you over like you hand your child in care of someone. And he says, I hand you over first to God and then second to the word of his grace. And the Bible says it is able to, number one, build you up, build you up. The first assignment of the word of God is not to give you things, is to build you up. Are we together now? Because your capacity, if not well built, will abuse and abort anything that is given to you. So the word of God comes to build you up and then to give you an inheritance among them which are sanctified. So when we gather like this, it is not just a Sunday ritual. It is not even just a tradition of a ministry. It is a platform to experience God and experience his word. And we expect that among the many things that he will do is to build us up capacity and then to grant us access to our inheritance. Are we together? Second scripture, Colossians chapter 1 and verse 9. Colossians chapter 1 and verse 9. For this cause we also, since the day we heard of it, do not cease to pray for you. So Paul is praying over the church in Colossae. And to desire that ye be filled with, number one, the knowledge of his will. This is the apostle praying that the church be filled with the knowledge of his will. And then number two, wisdom. In all wisdom. And then number three, spiritual understanding. These are the boundaries of your growth. That you be filled first with the knowledge of his will. In other words, God does not want his will, his intention to remain a mystery to the saints. And the house of God is the place where we have the opportunity for the knowledge of his will 
to be unveiled. And then number two, that wisdom be taught and imparted upon us. And then number three, spiritual understanding. Are you ready to pray all this now? Father, let these truths be at work in my life, even as I hear your word. Are we praying? Let these truths be at work in my life. I don't just want to come to church I want to grow and grow indeed the Bible says for an heir as long as he is a child differeth not from a slave although he be Lord of all hallelujah praise the Lord the next 20 30 minutes i'll be teaching on the mystery of impartation the mystery of impartation the mysteries of the kingdom are the systems by which we reign and we manifest dominion god in his infinite wisdom Heed his operations in mysteries so that until you belong to this kingdom and until you are guided by the wisdom of the spirit you may not be able to access his intelligence so the mysteries of the kingdom represent the intelligence of god the systems he has allocated for various dimensions of possibilities in the kingdom the kingdom as we know is a compendium of infinite possibilities but to activate the resources that are vested according to their dimensions we need to access the keys that we call mysteries are we together yes so restoration in the kingdom is governed by a mystery speed in the kingdom is governed by a mystery prosperity in the kingdom is governed by a mystery longevity governed by a mystery growth and impact and influence governed by a mystery are we together now so when the mysteries of the kingdom come to you god is about to reveal something that will culminate to your dominion are we together now we must pant after the exact knowledge of the mysteries of the kingdom and this is one of them that i seek to share this is not the only mystery there are so many and none of these mysteries can replace themselves just because you have one key does not mean every door in your house will be open the key that opens the kitchen may not open the bedroom and provided you are hungry it's all right to have only the key to the kitchen but not when you are sleepy when you are sleepy the kitchen will be useless are we together now so for your safety and balance you need to sustain the keys that can open every of the house the rooms in the house and this is one of the mysteries that i want to share most people know about impartation um we're a generation of power and we're a generation that love we love a lot of power in fact it's almost it's almost becoming a ritual pastor that when a service is done and no one is shouting and rolling the man of god can even get embarrassed and the members can join him in the embarrassment and it looks like god did not show up so it it seems like there is an increasing pressure where a generation that seems to be hungry for power we like to see the supernatural and we were designed so because man is a spirit that lives in a body and the connection is with the faculties that make him a soul are we together now and so because of that there is that intrinsic desire to experience a dimension higher than the three-dimensional realm it is not unusual for a human being to seek an extra natural manifestation of things that's why people like cartoons and films that have to do with scientology uh, um, cosmetology anything that is unusual it, it seems to get our attention 
And, and that is something that was embedded in man by God. It is God's desire that we walk in the supernatural. It is God's desire that we manifest possibilities that are higher than the realm of the natural man. Why is that so? Because you see, the normal natural progression of life will not allow you to maximize the blessings of the kingdom in your lifetime. The rate of change, the rate of transformation, uh, everything without God is too slow for your lifetime to be able to reflect God. So there will be a need, it necessitates an introduction, listen to me, of a factor and a dimension that can do something to time and do something to your life to give you an advantage. Are we together? So, if you get to school at 26 and you graduate at 31, and you get married at 35 and you get a job that pays you 30,000 chances are that your entire life will not be able to make any meaning because at that rate of progression you are too slow to strike any chord that can glorify Christ so there a system was built to assist you to take advantage of time. Listen very carefully. Some of us, because of our backgrounds, we had all kinds of pasts. And so the time that was allocated for your growth and impact was spent in the world. Now you got born again at 30. And wonderful as it is, 40 years is already gone or 30 years already gone. But the Bible says there is a system we can use to redeem time. Are we together now? Yes. If a woman gets married and for 10 years she's not able to have a child 10 years would have been enough to have four or three children and be done giving birth now at the 11th year if she keeps having a child one by one it means that she'll be done giving birth when she's 20 or 25 years in marriage so there is a system in God's economy where the woman can have triplets once it's not a miracle it's a way to redeem time nine years was compressed within one year this is how god works with people are we are we together this morning yes it is possible that you can go to school study well be a graduate have your certifications extra certifications and simply because of your territorial location Someone can look at you and say, you are not Yoruba, you are not Igbo, you are not Hausa. Although you are deserving of this honor, by reason of your background that you have no control of, you become a victim of status quo. So there has to be a system in God where the saints can ride through this tide of injustice. Are we together now? One of these systems is the power and the mystery of impartation. Let's look at a few scriptures. Romans chapter 1. We see the word impart used there, verse 11. Paul himself was speaking and he says, For I long to see you that I may impart, not teach, I may impart unto you some spiritual gift to the end that ye may be established. Please leave that scripture there. Very interesting. So Paul is saying that as it is now, you are saved but you are not established. And I know that leaving you as you are will never establish you. So my coming is a symbol of God's mercy. His system of acceleration to you. I long, I desire, I know how much you need to rise. But I know that at your current level and within the frame of your ex experience, you cannot be established. And so he says, I long to see you not to discuss i had i came to you already before and i taught you certain things i'm not coming to teach again the teaching that i gave you the other time already built you but you are not established because through wisdom a house is built but being built alone is not enough building is not the same as establishment 
Are we together? So he says, I long to see you. You invited me once and I came, he's saying. And I taught you well. And I can see the fruit of that spiritual understanding. But I still see a deficiency. You are yet to be stabilized. So I long to see you. This time around, that I may impart unto you some spiritual gift. He says, to the end, this is my desire, that ye may be established. Are we together? Philippians chapter 1 and verse 7. Paul again, the apostle, is teaching the church in Philippi. And he says, even as it is meet for me to think of you all, because I have you in my heart, in as, in as much as both in my bonds and in the defense and the confirmation of the gospel, he says, ye all. How many? Not ye ministers, not ye men of God, not ye businessmen. Ye all are partakers of my grace. Ye all are partakers. Ye all are partakers of my grace. So a man can partake of the grace of another. Are we together? I'm establishing something now. That it is possible to partake of a grace. That the grace committed to a man is shareable. It can be released to you. And the possibilities that that man walks in and experiences can suddenly become your possibilities please i need you to listen let's take a break here and then i just teach you something quickly i believe i should have said that at one point or the other here but just to teach that there is a system by which we receive the power of god three levels the first level pastor by which the saints access the power of god is through encounters encounters the first level a man can encounter god a supernatural experience doesn't have to be visionary but it has to be supernatural that a man can have a supernatural experience with god and among the many benefits of that experience is a release of power Solomon has an experience with God, pastor, and then an impartation of an understanding heart and a grace came directly from God. Number two, the second level of God's power can be experienced by activating laws and principles. That means there is a dimension of God's power that has already been vested in laws and principles. You do not have to be born again to access that level of power. Are we together? The moment the principles of the kingdom are activated, automatically there is an ability. Reproduction is a principle. When a thief meets with his wife, she will be pregnant. His being a thief will not stop pregnancy because it's a principle. If Boko Haram plants now, as wicked as they are, with blood on the soil, the crop will still grow because already there is a system of God's power that is vested in his principles. As anointed as I am, if I stand intentionally to mock God in front of a road, I can end my life right now in five minutes. Are we together now? Yes. Principles. 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 You don't have to ask God to honor principles. No. His power, a dimension of his power has already been vested in it. So you never have to pray for your food to digest. Designed in you by the intelligence of God. Your assignment is to get it so far. Once you swallow it, the mechanism is automatic. No woman gets pregnant and keeps telling um, the seed what to do. No, there is a system that has been preset to coordinate itself. So when there is a default, you know that another agency is interrupting the process because it was designed to be seamless. Are we together now? The second dimension of God's power. Then the third dimension of God's power is experienced by... 
your aligning to a man or a system that has a covenant with God listen carefully that means that receiving of this dimension of God's power has nothing to do with your personal work with God it is the advantage that is accorded your life by sustaining the wisdom to discern that there is a man that through sacrifice has a personal covenant with God that makes for certain possibilities within his life are we together God called Abraham alone he didn't call Lot and Lot went with him Lot discerned that Abraham mm -mm, this man for him to be this courageous to leave this place and go to a place he did not know I will go with you all of a sudden Lot began to increase he was a partaker of the blessing of that obedience when he detached from Abraham his results showed that it was not his personal understanding he went down immediately when Jacob was in the house of Laban there is no mention of Laban asking God for increase and praying but he, he he entered that house with something and there was multiplication Laban had to go and consult with diviners and say tell me there is nothing unusual I was doing that I'm not doing or that that I'm doing new what is the reason and he said there is a young man you see that young man make sure he does not leave you because if he leaves you every other thing you see with him will leave you are, are you following me now god blesses and speaks to abraham and says abraham you are blessed and all the seed that will come out of you now abraham makes a mistake and gets hagar pregnant ishmael as we know we believe is an illegitimate son because he's with hagar and then hagar and ishmael are both banished to the wilderness both of them are crying of thirst the mother is crying the baby is crying but god only hears the voice of the baby you read your bible the voice of hagar was never heard in heaven crying louder than the child but god was hearing the voice of abraham not the baby the covenant and the promise was to Abraham and whatever comes out of him. He has nothing whether it was a mistake or not. That is between Abraham and God. But as far as that child is concerned, God must seem to honor him. So God came because of that child. There are dimensions of spiritual realities that will not come as a product of your personal secret place there are dimensions that will not even come just because of the extent of your knowledge of god in god's dealings with men he left room for people to be partakers of certain possibilities for many reasons one because the price that it takes to access certain levels not everyone will have the grace to pay that price yet in god's love and benevolence he still desires that you receive of that blessing and then number two because of god's system his way of operation he does not call everybody and anoint everybody he calls a man and anoints the man for the sake of a people when god looks at israel isaiah chapter 9 verse 8 he desires that israel come into a level of blessing and illumination and he doesn't come to israel and say israel i want to bless you he finds a man called jacob and the benefit of the encounter with jacob lights upon israel it's his system you see our personal work with god is not based on covenant listen carefully but kingdom advancement is based on covenant our personal work with god is based on relationship but kingdom advance is based on covenant the systems of god please understand what i'm teaching you are we together so there are human beings on earth and scattered through scripture that are god's idea of several dimensions of himself god will find a man and enter a covenant with that man not old and new covenant no 
This is a personal covenant. It becomes the platform for God to release that dimension of his possibility to that dispensation. That means no other person in that dispensation will access that dimension ignoring that man and ignoring what God has done. Please listen. Many believers do not understand this mystery and this is why we continue to suffer. Are we together? These men are not carrying mantles. These men are systems. It's not a mantle they are carrying. They have represented spiritual systems. They are the institution that God recommends for certain dimensions. Listen, listen. Abraham is a man that enters a covenant with God. And from that time, if you want to walk in the blessing, you cannot ignore Abraham. So when Jesus comes himself, Jesus has to submit to that order. He's being the son of God, notwithstanding. The Jews said, we have Abraham, your father. I said, no, if you Abraham were your father, you would do the works of Abraham. And Galatians chapter 3, when you read from verse 29, it says, and if ye be Abraham's seed, then are ye heirs according to the promise. So Abraham is the route to salvation. Because the earth is not only the Lord's, the earth was also Abraham's. He's in your Bible. Are you not a Christian? He gave, he gave. <laughs> God willed the earth to Abraham and his seed. Duh, duh. One day, that seed there we know was Christ. Are we together now? Yes. So it was through that Abrahamic blessing. Are we together now? That the whole earth was saved. He said, indeed, shall all the families of the earth be blessed. What is the blessing of Abraham? It's not cars. It's not houses. The blessing of Abraham is justification by faith. So God came and preached the gospel to Abraham. And Abraham believed. And it was reckoned to him without doing anything for righteousness. So we like faithful Abraham in that similitude. He was the pattern man that sets that order that a man can believe God without any works of the law. And then it is credited to you for righteousness. So Abraham even in heaven is recognized as the father. He is not brother Abraham. He is not elder Abraham. You go to heaven. The father is there, but Abraham is still recognized as a father. Please sit down. When the Bible begins to teach us on how to walk in dominion and to use the power of words and the prophetic to manipulate the spiritual climate over ourselves the bible personifies another individual in james chapter 5 when you read from verse 13 he says is any man afflicted he says let him pray so the subject here is prayer and the power of prayer to change things then you go to verse 17 and he says that elijah was a man subject to like passion so he names a man not an angel a physical man as his example of what you can do with prayer he's showing the potential of prayer and he uses a man a face that communicates that Elijah was a man subject to like passion and he prayed earnestly meaning you are not a man of prayer if you have not studied Elijah you can study Jesus you can study anybody but God's recommendation for prayer that works is Elijah are we together Time will fail me, Hebrews 11, to talk of certain men. There were some that did not make that list, but he begins to list them. Begins to list them. Through faith, 
Abel offered a more excellent sacrifice. That means if you want to study the kind of sacrifice that God receives, he is recommended a man, study Abel. Abel is a contrast that with Cain that is possible to give offerings and they are not accepted. And if your tithe is not working and your giving is not working, you go back to Abel. What did he do? Because Cain did the same thing. Are we together? Systems that we study and understand the ways of God. And let me tell you this. The ones that were in scripture are not the only ones that God is using because all of them are dead. Some have been translated to heaven. But because it is a consistent pattern of God, every time a dispensation fades with those people, there is a new recruitment in the spirit. God will look for the new faces for a generation. And so you must understand that it is true that we are born again. It is true that all of us have the same access by one spirit to Christ. But then it is not true that all of us can independently access every possibility in the kingdom on our own. It's not true. Mm -mm. Mm -mm. Jesus walks under a closed heaven for 30 years. The word of God under a closed heaven. And then he meets John the prophet. And John opens his heavens. The father never spoke about Jesus. He kept watching him every day. Until John came and opened his heavens. Very, very powerful. In every generation, there are men and women. We have coined a name for them. Sometimes we call them God's generals. Sometimes we call them all kinds of people. And I hope you know the concept of being a general is not just by the accreditation of men. Because there are people you may not think are generals, but in the spirit they are generals. In the Bible, there was a very strange woman called Anna the prophetess. We don't see her being a big woman of God, but that woman interceded for 60 years. She was the reason why Jesus was born properly. I don't know any man that has that grace for that level of intercession without backsliding she did not go and come she sat down in the temple for 60 years so when Jesus was born it was necessary to take him to meet her Jesus she had to touch him and speak over him and then Simeon the prophet spoke over him they said now you can go Otherwise, you would have been surprised how Jesus would have aborted the mission of the cross. It didn't just succeed because he was Jesus. He followed the patterns. Look at the men that he met. And the unique contributions. They are patterns. They cannot be violated. When it was time to multiply bread, Jesus takes the bread and multiplies it and prays over it and tells them he says now you take the bread and go and do the multiplication why didn't he just hold the, tell them hold the bread and just pray on it the father will hear you too they would have been surprised was it not in your bible that Saul lost his kingdom because he thought everybody could do everything remember are we bible students so after waiting for Samuel, the people were mounting pressure on him as a king. Make the sacrifices once and for all. What is there? The most important thing is God, you hear church members say. And then under pressure, he now offers the sacrifice. And I hope you know that Samuel was really late. So there was a basis for God saying, no, 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 I, you are fair, you are fair. You, we can't waste people's time because of one man. Ay, God self. Ah. The ways of God are very strange. And then Samuel comes and looks at Saul and says, Saul, you have done foolishly. What is this that you have done? He said, you would have been patient. Allow me to come and God would have, by this sacrifice, established your kingdom forever. He says, but because you have done this now, you didn't sleep with a woman. You didn't drink beer. 
you didn't do anything you only violated spiritual patterns he said because of this the kingdom now is taken from you so it would have been thou son of saul have mercy on me because of a violation of spiritual patterns one time they came and began to harass moses harass moses again and again and again why did you marry a black ethiopian woman and after they harassed him he was tired one day and the presence of god i'm sure he was angry that day whatever happened a cloud just came and covered Aaron and Miriam. Aaron was immune because of his priesthood and because Miriam did not have that immunity, the cloud lifted and she was white as leprous. Now I'm not using this to scare you because sometimes men of God like teaching these kinds of things as a way of scaring members to cover their insecurities but it's true. It's true. There are patterns you can violate and it can cost you even your life. Are we together? On earth today, there are still men that represent these systems. When you talk about the subject of faith, are you learning this morning? The individual on earth today, as far as God has revealed to us, that represents God's covenant system of imparting faith and the possibilities that come from it is Kenneth Copeland, now alive on earth today. Any man you have seen on earth that is truly walking by faith with results, even if you went to heaven and came back, at one point or the other, honor that system. It's true. Hmm. This is not human worship, my brothers and my sisters. This is spiritual intelligence. He just celebrated, I think, 56 or 57 years in marriage. Still flies himself at 80 something. Does that look to you like what happened to Joshua? That even in his old age, he said, my strength, my natural strength has not been abated. There are men that carry those things. It's true. Supernatural possibilities by the Spirit. There are dimensions that even if you pray and say, God, grant me this grace. In your visions, it is those faces you will see. God will refer you back. It is true. It is true. One of the clearest example of favor in the Bible is Esther. The entire book of Esther does not have a man of God mentioned there. It was a woman that was both the apostle and the prophet in that story. So you study Esther and you study the grace and the pattern that she had. It's very, very strange that every time God begins to talk of unusual favor, he uses women. Esther, Ruth, Herodias' daughter, all of them, they are examples of unusual and uncommon favor. A lady dances and a king does not consult people and says, even half of my kingdom I will give you. There are levels of growth and result that we seek and our personal work with God and our level of growth cannot afford us to walk in those possibilities and so at such times god will begin to recommend for you that there is a principle in the kingdom allocated by which the saints can partake philippians 1 7 remember ye all are partakers of my grace a personal encounter with jesus will not automatically take away the need to receive impartation jesus meets with saul of tarsus who would later become paul after the encounter he now says go to the house of a man called judah wait there another man will continue from where i have stopped how can jesus say a man should continue from where he has stopped hallelujah 
run away from any man who cannot trace the possibilities in his life at least to one or two encounter with men mm -mm. Mm -mm. Mm -mm. there must be an introduction even abraham a day came when he met a strange man a king of an ancient city called salem called melchizedek he returned back remember he was a warrior he just conquered the land and recovered his brother-in-law and yet he met this man forget about the tight part it is that he met this man and the man looked at him he didn't say abraham well done we are fellow champions he said abraham kneel down you are i make you possessor of the heavens and the earth how can a man bless a man like that that sounds like pride possessor of the heavens and the earth partakers of this grace partakers of this grace every man of god in truth and honesty will be able to trace for you specific times by the spirit when they encountered men as directed by god and the radical shifts and the dimensions that they entered by reason of those encounters others will tell you it was that encounter that brought them into certain levels of the healing ministry others will tell you it was that encounter that opened them up to the prophetic others will tell you that their church is the grace for multiplication the grace as a system came upon them through those encounters let me tell you impartation is a system of acceleration god gives speed to a man's life by saving you the labor of years of spiritual sacrifice and then imparts to you the possibility that's what impartation is a transference of spiritual possibilities it's not a transference of anointing it's not a transference of oil it's a transference of possibilities the anointing is just a career of it our generation i submit to you is a very proud generation proud for many reasons because we're a generation with a lot of knowledge and while it is true that we celebrate knowledge many times we have sometimes wrongly been indoctrinated that you do not need anybody to rise all you need is god i agree if you are speaking in terms of god's sovereign power then it is true but if you are speaking in terms of his system you made a big mistake every time god wanted to anoint kings he would tell samuel it's time it's time look at how men played roles in the lives of men samuel anoints saul as king samuel announces the rejection of saul as king samuel enthrones david as king there will always be a man god stores his anointing in institutions he stores his anointing in physical territories and he stores his anointing in men men are god's spiritual storehouses anointings are not stored in a bottle a bottle is only a representation we honor bottles more than we do men we honor vases more than we do men we have all sorts of jars labeled having different names and we honor those jars but there is no jar that can bless any man the oil that was in that room was helpless until a man activated it through the power of prophecy madam go and borrow vessels borrow not a few and the oil said i'm ready listen god prophesied on earth nothing happened till a man repeated what he said speak to the bones and say all bones hear the word of the lord and the bones did not move until the man now said all right i pick his words bones speak and then they started to resurrect i thought god speaking should already make the bones say there's no need this is his majesty he just spoke the mountains keep like, ah. until a man spoke men are very important 
men are very important do not allow the weaknesses and the imperfection of men make you think that just because men have faults and men are imperfect in the economy of God he still incorporated them remember in the temple he was asked to put a little living in the bread the living stands for impurity why will you put a living in the bread and still take it to the tabernacle God was creating a factor for the limitations of men but prophetically he was saying look this vessel it doesn't have to be perfect to be used it has to be sincere to be used so in spite of the anger of Elijah you ignore him your crops will die because he controlled the rain other sons of the prophet were already offended by him he was an you study Elijah I would not want to be mentored by Elijah Elijah will abuse your intelligence and, and insult you just for resting on a mountain the king sends people he would have said tell the king to mind his business he said for starters let fire come down and it consumed 50 people someone carried the ashes of both the men and the donkeys back to the king and said this is a statement from Elijah will you want to stay under such a person won't he kill you one day yet Elisha said I still ignore it I know what I'm looking for the sons of the prophet were obviously sad and offended Elisha was not even part of the school but he would keep pouring water on the hands of Elijah and then one day they said do you know that God is going to take your master I said, hey, hey. just ignored him after following a man four different regions he now looks at him and says, ask quickly what do you want how about honor me i've been following you diligently do i have to tell you i need something my pursuit should tell you he said ask quickly i'm about to leave he would have said look you are not the only man i will talk to god alone but he said there's no room for offense i recognize what you carry he said a double portion of your anointing do you know he would have said all right you have been a faithful son i love you he said if you can see me let me just tell you this is if you if you can see me as a look at that kind of teacher and while all of this is happening god is watching the ark is being carried on a cart god would have quickly told the priest uh -uh, this is not correct please change it quickly come let let it be let the pattern be restored he kept quiet and a man sincerely seeing that the ark was going to fall sir he ran to hold it and died god i mean is this not i love your house so much and i went to go and touch it and then i died and the bible never says the ark fell Let me tell you this there are levels you will never rise to until you have the privilege of access to certain men who are spiritual systems now let me tell you this you don't choose them they are chosen by God your assignment is to discern and partake are we together now you can know that these men are systems by what happens to you if it takes more than one day for you to see a result they are not it did you hear what I said they are not it at all read the Bible every time you met this man the shift was a quantum leap that's the word let me use your word it was a drastic shift immediately Elisha encounters Elijah and goes straight to the river. Where is the Lord God of Elijah? It part. It doesn't start parting gradually. Say, come back after two weeks when your hand is a little strong. No, right there and then. It's a system of acceleration. Now, please listen to me. Financial prosperity. There are principles. We had an awesome time at the business session yesterday. And there are principles you can learn to rise. But in my little life, I've seen strange men on this earth that don't seem to know so much of those principles. And life has been forced to obey them. They don't open doors, they break it. 
so that there's no hope of the door closing again i have seen this i have seen god speak certain things to people and other people stood with god and renegotiated what he said even without the permission of those who he spoke to they just received the outcome I have seen men on this earth do things that I'm not talking of divination I'm not talking of sorcery I have seen strange dimensions of these possibilities it's in this church I shared with you a few days a few years ago about a territory in this country that has a strange grace for long life was it here yes You can choose to die at 30 or 40 but there are people and those people are not even praying for life you will be surprised how much of sinners some of those people are yet in the midst of it they will still you will shoot they will still survive because something seems to be working let me tell you this you see when diviners and sorcerers want to recruit people for priesthood they search for these things they they want to know what tribe what spiritual tribe and what spiritual configuration is in that potential candidate and they look at this child and say no you come from a region where there is long life come you will be a priest this this, this is a herbalist this is how it's not everybody that is receivable you can come and donate yourself and they reject you based on what was said do you believe what i'm sharing with you it's true it's true house on the rock as a ministry listen to me there is a possibility that was invested in this ministry that when you come under that grace and that covering even before learning the principles that make for that result the result will already be speaking there are churches like that in this nation long before you even know what you are doing the results are already there it's later you will find out that ah so this is what should lead to the result and your neighbor says this is not fair because both of you were equally ignorant that means that your outcomes should be the same there are people who have strange graces to set barring people free it's a grace that God gave them and so you find out that a pregnant woman can just meander their path just by mistake and they speak carelessly and casually and the woman will carry twins and triplets yet in the same system there is someone saying oh lord when will you visit me can i tell you this it is true that all things are possible but they are possible because of the systems that god has put in place they are not just possible because you know god alone they are possible because even if they are not possible with you you can partake of that possibility you can outsource it praise the lord i can trace major shifts in my life to specific encounters we don't have time for that we're going to pray specific encounters i have a lot of supernatural encounters i have a lot of angelic encounters a lot of heavenly encounters but that in itself did not replace the grace for systems this morning your pastor put this theme because there is a dimension he has seen in his life he has seen in house on the rock he has experienced that may not yet be at work in your life are we together now and this is a platform to provide an opportunity so that you become a partaker of this grace and that if you believe this you will be surprised to see the dimension that you are working in i shared with you a story if you still remember about a woman or two women that i bought sugarcane for many years ago 
They didn't have anything, just love God with my heart. And I saw the women, they were going to buy sugar cane and they were trying to open up their, their wrapper where they hid the money. And then I said, I said, please let me, let me, let it be my honor to just buy them the sugar. They said, no, no, no. I said, please, I insist. And then I bought them the sugar cane. It was not more than 100 naira. And then they began to bless me. They began to bless me. Women that were not looking, there was nothing comely there. And one of the women looked at me and said, my son forever walk upon gold. My son, I'm trying to remove 10 naira, but I give you gold. Walk upon it. There are people who have a kingmaker anointing. They are not allowed to partake of the anointing. They only store it and distribute it. So be careful. It's not always results that validate the presence of grace. It is so most of the time, but it is not so all the time. So you can see a man that never has a church, just a quiet intercessor, but he has been mandated to make men international. You meet with that man and he says, let me bless you. And he lays his hands upon you. And it looks as if you held a charm. Some of these people we are talking about are your very parents. You grew up with them, yet you don't have the grace. Because you never had the discernment to see. That when your mother locks the door and prays in the night, sorry for any man she's praying against. But by that morning, something has even if it's a landlord there are people who don't waste words if they speak even if it's a mistake god will honor it and rebuke them later do you believe what i'm sharing Let me tell you sincerely, sincerely, my brothers and my sisters, you will never rise beyond certain levels until this truth, this mystery that you learned this morning, when it becomes part of your life. That's why there are people who have, who have found ease in their lives. They have mastered the art of discerning graces and they know how to distinguish between men and systems. If you can see me, he was looking at him. But if you discern what I represent, that I'm not just a man and a prophet. Because human beings die, yet I'm going to heaven and a chariot is coming to carry me. Is that a man? And he discerned it. My father, my father, the chariots of Israel and the horsemen thereof. Whatever is the meaning of what he said. All we know is that whatever that code is, it was an answer and he got it well and something fell upon him three keys to receiving impartation three keys very quickly number one the first key to receiving impartation is discernment discernment you must discern that these truths i share with you are part of god's system and you must discern and believe that there are such men on earth discernment the fortitude to perceive the ability to see discernment many people do not have discernment discernment hmm. it says strong meat is for those who are mature of full age who by reason of use have learned to to exercise their senses to discern between good and evil so elisha is passing every time and a shunammite woman discerns that this man is a holy man of god he's always passing here she never went to where he was going to but something in her she knew that this is not an ordinary man and she said let's do something quickly we'll come there shortly discernment is the first thing you cannot receive from a person and a grace and a truth you don't discern hearing is not discernment 
it must be a settled reality in your life that this is part of the kingdom system this is not an opinion of a man it's not an opinion of a denomination you can do nothing against the truth but for the truth discernment number two the second key is honor honor to god and honor to these vessels that by the election of grace have become these prophetic conduits these transmitters of this dimension what is honor honor is the discerning the celebrating and the rewarding of a man because of the grace and the uniqueness upon him the discerning the celebrating and the rewarding of uniqueness that's what we call honor your ability to perceive that this is not just a prophet the ability to perceive that this is not just a man of God the ability to perceive that this is not just a pastor and then you honor that grace let me tell you honor is very inconveniencing I'm not talking about money it's difficult to honor when you are successful yourself because you have results that is the reason why successful people never become more successful it's failures that become successful but they plateau at a realm because honor is difficult when i see men of god who honor me and regard me i have a lot of respect for them because i'm a man of god myself and i know what it takes to put that crown on the ground and honor a grace is a hard thing when a successful person honors you double your respect for him i have seen very great mighty men and women of god and sometimes i'm flattered by their outspoken display of honor and sometimes i'm tempted to say no please don't do this i don't know apostle please let that happen and and without my personal control i know when this thing is rising and i know when it is not rising i will still pray in that case just for you to leave me alone but i know when something is really rising to bless you let me tell you many men of god that pray for people is less than five percent of the people they pray for that they really pray with the anointing provoked it is a secret men of god i apologize for revealing something very honest but it's true most times it's just because people don't want disturbance and they don't want you to feel bad or sometimes they themselves are surprised that the anointing is not there so they just say may the lord bless you and increase you and honor you go it is done and you really go and uh, you and the man will later pray for you because he knows that nothing really happened just oh god i commend you this man to your mercy but there are people who because of the honor they feel guilty for your situation and they take responsibility over it lord why should this sister this brother why should this church and this man of god that have such regard for your grace upon my life be doing this i pray for them in your name as touching the grace you have given me and they get into a serious dialogue with god not prayer a dialogue and while that is happening the church and the person does not even know a discussion is happening and god says for your sake you will see what will happen it's true it's true i have prayed for people i have prayed for ministries i have talked on my behalf um, some of you who follow our ministries know some of the testimonies they kidnapped one of our our dear people's um was it brother or sister and just kidnapped the person like that and for a long time the person was i mean you know how these people are they will mention a wicked amount and maybe 20 million naira for ransom or a very devilish amount and they just mention it and now that was what happened there and then when the person i got to know it it really pained me and i said lord this should not be this is not my agreement with you and i sent the person a text i said it is done the person must be released I, I, i'm not sure it was up to one day they released the person it's true let me tell you until you see these graces at work you won't believe what can happen let me tell you this ah, how 
happy is the man that stands in front of a grace that really works you will see the ease that comes walking with god life can be hard when you claim there is a grace and it's not there are we together i don't lie to myself what is not there i don't say is there i humble myself and ask lord how will this thing come because it's painful to pretend it's not natural so you will feel the pain if imagine me pretending to be a lady i mean how many minutes can i ask that kind of drama if i will be implicated i will look stupid it won't work no matter how i'm i'm, I'm so i rather just be myself don't pretend a possibility that is not yet in your life be honest enough to know that by the grace of god i've seen this in my life but in all sincerity i have not seen this one and then your heart can be open to receive when you generalize grace and you say you have everything you are in trouble you're in serious trouble a day came when the disciples knew that they had some things and didn't have others and a day came peter knew that he had gotten it shadows his shadow was raising the sick and healing people are we together honor honor i sat down here a few minutes ago and you graciously honored me i was touched let me tell you one secret about me i am extremely conservative when you see anything that looks like charismatism in my life is ministry is the anointing that makes it like that if i have a way of preaching so that you don't see me i will do it i will just hide behind this this uh design and then keep preaching so i'm not somebody who likes some of you like spotlights i i'm it's, it's not me at all i really honestly i'm i'm almost allergic to spotlight so you can imagine how uncomfortable it is for me when people honor me but as painful as it is i know it's a principle and so while i sat down here and you were doing this you saw how uncomfortable i was i didn't even know what to do with myself should i touch pastor should i hug what should i do you know some of you have a way of enjoying it you but for me you don't know what to do but when i saw this happening I said truly these people are ready to receive something every time jesus entered a city he discerned who honored him and when he entered the city and they said oh you are carpenter's son he just quietly left because he did his best and nothing happened honor is not an insult on your grace honor is a secret that transits you to a new level number three the third key and we pray to receiving impartation is sacrifice hmm. sacrifice now this is an uncomfortable truth but it's true it's true sometimes i'm wish i wish i'm not the one teaching certain things but it's true let me tell you my brothers and my sisters you will never truly receive from a grace and receive from a system if it does not cost you it's not just your money adaptation is proof of honor every grace you see that truly carries the anointing is difficult to work with sometimes i look at this my people and i pity them i just i i feel sad for them sometimes honestly because um it's it's a very difficult thing many times i love them with all my heart and they know but sometimes it's very difficult because there are many things that they may not really have understanding of and they just follow with wisdom trusting that god is in this sacrifice sacrifice and then your seed now the issue of seed has been abused in the body of christ sadly and it must be corrected but let me tell you this my brothers and my sisters 
there truly truly will have to be something that will cost you if it is real grace that you want to step into I cannot tell you the sacrifices that I have made the seeds that I have sown into the life of extraordinary men and women of God around the world and continue to do it is costly to be anointed it is costly to be very anointed it will not just come cheap I, I know that you don't like what I'm saying but I hope you do because your pastor has taught you well anything valuable is costly when you go to the shopping mall you can see the same product and they will show you the grades and the varieties this is a thousand naira this is two thousand this is five thousand this is fifty thousand the same thing and you will be tempted to say what is the difference until you have the privilege of using the one that is is most costly and then you will know that there really is a difference the anointing is costly receiving from graces is costly god made it so so that it will not be abused as a principle i never 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 go and meet any senior man of god and any father of faith empty-handed never and i don't mean it's not just something as i'm talking i'm checking my pocket to remove this no it is a prepared blessing prepared blessing i can begin to tell you stories upon stories upon stories of my encounter and some of these great men of god some of them did not even pray for me but just because that was engaged i remember a man that i met and sowed a seed into his life and he looked at me and he prayed a very dangerous prayer he said god create a problem that only him can solve i said ah this this i don't like this you know i'm for the body of christ i don't like being i don't like that kind of I, i'm not sure i like that kind of prayer quite honestly he was very vocal about it he was not i mean aggressively vocal create a problem that only him can solve I, I'm, I'm not that kind of person i like all of us men of god i don't like to outshine it's not me yet he prayed that prayer and then i found out that it is your uniqueness that rewards you your similarity keeps you together but when it has to do with your rising it is your uniqueness he prayed a prayer that looked like a very selfish prayer but i believe it was coming from a father's heart discernment honor sacrifice there is no true honor without sacrifice it, it, it's not about raising a special offering listen it's an understanding that i want you to inculcate even as we pray sacrifice ask any great man they will tell you stories upon stories upon stories of sacrifice there are so many people who come down to our ministry week in week out there are people who come and find out that i'm not around apostle is not around he's gone for administration they came to just spend one day but they say i'm staying here they spend an extra sometimes with no place to stay they say i don't care i'm staying there like fools some of these people are overseers themselves and they sit down praying sometimes fasting their budget was not it listen when you see someone sacrificing don't be so emotional that you stop them from rising there are times that you can be so emotional that you stop people from making major moves that will hit them i'm that kind of person if i see you wanting to empty your wallet i will refuse i will even run away if you give me that money i want so it i don't have that kind of heart but if i keep you that way you will never rise 
I cannot tell you how many times I emptied my accounts. I mean 0.00 naira. God gives an instruction. Painfully so, sometimes I see the account numbers in my dreams. So I don't even have the privilege of at least meeting the man to receive a blessing. I want to pray for you. Listen, let me tell you, my brothers and my sisters. Ask your pastor, ask Pastor Fidelis, ask every dear man and woman of God seated here. Behind every grace is blood dripping on the ground. A symbol of real sacrifice. Real sacrifice. Not, 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 um, not eye service. Genuine sacrifice. There are men and women who have covenanted to honor me for the rest of their lives. I don't know what to do with them. I beg them and cry to them to stop. They say, no way. If you look at this, your pastor, and you think your pastor is just a wonderful house on the rock pastor, Pastor Pete, sharp, smart, handsome, anointed man of God, if that is all you see, you may be frustrated eventually. You must get to a point where you discern that much more than this, much more than this, I see grace. I see an ability to lift. I see an ability to rise. Let me tell you, as a principle, if you dishonor me, I will not hate you. But I will never prophesy to you. It's a waste of time. It's a complete waste of time. Not out of hatred. It's I'm wasting my time. I'm wasting your own time too. I can just commend you to God's mercy. <laughs> Honor is the key to access. This morning, it's time for God to shift us. We have the miracle service in the night, so I'm not doing any ministration. I'm just speaking over your life, joining faith with Pastor Pete. Let me tell you this, and I submit to you. This man standing before you is a product of God's favor. My life today is not because I am the greatest preacher, the most anointed, the most sound preacher, but for some reason and by the wisdom of God, by his predetermined counsel and the election of grace, God can pick a man and make you to represent the face of certain possibilities for a generation. Jacob have I loved, Esau have I hated. You ask him why, he will explain it. But the truth is the truth. Are we together now? Yes. So every time I have the opportunity to speak over people, I count it a great privilege. I will never abuse the honor that your pastor, this church, and any other man of God and any other person will accord this. But I know, I know what will happen to your life when you receive. It's not pride, it's the truth. There is no man that does not know what he carries. And there is no man that does not know the result that follows what he carries. There are certain levels that we should not remain in. Please let me encourage you within the five or six minutes that we have. If you will just open your heart and discern that my pastor truly loves me. Lord, I have struggled this finance thing. I'm a man of God. There is no growth in my church. I love you. I love you with all my heart. There is no sign. There is no wonder. Things are not going right in my life. There's no favor. All doors are closed. I study scripture and the things I see there and the things I see in my life do not match. I have a business and it is not working. I traveled abroad to get a certification. I came back, nothing changed. Because there are graces. Are you ready to pray? Please rise up on your feet.
in one minute while you are standing please i like you to raise a cry from the depth of your heart tell the lord the dimension that you seek to see in your life the dimension that must speak in your life please lift up your voice and let's pray in one minute and down up today down up today down up today down there are some of you doors never seem to open Don't, no matter what you do please pray this is your pastor's gift to you on this appreciation song Why is my church not growing, oh God? Why am I struggling financially? Is there no balm in Gilead? Why is this disease and infirmity killing and eating me up? Pray, I will speak over your life in a moment and then we are I came for this pastor's appreciation service so that God would upgrade my life. I long to see you that I may impart, impart, impart. Impart upon you some spiritual gift to the end that ye be established, to the end that ye be fruitful, to the end that ye prosper. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I'm going to pray a general prayer now just to speak into your life. And then by evening when we come for the miracle service, I believe that one of the things that will happen will be an impartation of unique graces. We may not be able to do that now. We may not be able to do that now. But it's important for you to know what you are looking for if your eye be single then your body is full of light you must set your face like a flint and passionately desire passionately desire I'm only going to pray one prayer for you that the grace that makes for speed please listen speed is a powerful blessing in a man's life delay is not about retrogression it's about dominion over your time whatever has dominion over your time has destroyed you whatever has dominion over your body did not really destroy you if it did not touch your time you are still in victory anything that touches your time joblessness attempts to do something to your time delay your time is a great prayer to speak acceleration to people i want to pray that prayer 
it's not enough to move forward you must move forward fast because our lives are measured in time it's not enough to be in ministry you must trust god for grace to do much for the kingdom fast he said i will i must walk the works of him that sent me while it is day it will not always be day for the night cometh when no man can walk again I decree and declare over your life in the name of Jesus Christ that the grace that has brought this church within a short time God has given the man of God influence and a voice even over this city I decree and declare that the grace that conquers time may that grace be released upon you now May that grace be released upon you now. May that grace be released upon you now. When the grace for speed comes upon your life, in one month, it is possible to do something that in five years could not be done. It's true. It's true. It's true. I may never have the opportunity to share with you my testimonies. But my brothers and my sisters, I, I can tell you that when God grants you access to speed, you will stand like a spectator and wonder at life. It is one of the yokes that must be broken in Africa. We never rise early. You buy your first car at 40 first house at 50 first child at 60 is not a blessing it is good that a man bear his yoke in his youth what is wrong with god granting you grace to be established fast so that you can have the time to focus on the things that, that, that that's what the psalmist said that oh god that you will satisfy me early not late early I decree and declare in the name that is above all names whatever has manipulated time over your destiny over your ministry to make that time continues to pass but that you are not achieving anything I command that power to be destroyed right now I command that power to be destroyed right now I command that power to be destroyed right now I stand in agreement with Pastor Pete and the grace upon House on the Rock. In the name of Jesus, every result you have seen in this church, both from the headquarters and in this branch that is not yet at work in your life, the spirit of leadership, the spirit of excellence, influence and access to systems, may you receive that grace now in the name of Jesus. I decree and declare finally that for some of you between now and the evening program not tomorrow if you have the faith to believe this I declare to you I stand by the spirit of the living God that as you are leaving this place between now and evening return with a strange testimony return with a strange testimony enjoy the ministry of man enjoy the ministry of man Return with a strange testimony. Hallelujah. Please let me request, if Pastor will permit me, that if you are coming for the miracle service, please listen. If it is possible and you are fine with it, sir, I will request that you write, even if it's just two things that you know are graces not problems listen to me now not challenges oh god i want tea and bread no dimensions of the spirit dimensions of spiritual reality that you know you must carry in this conference are we together now i want you to just write it neatly in a paper somewhere in the miracle service 
We are going to pray upon it and speak it. And let me tell you this, except God is not God, you will be surprised to see what you will carry. These things are ordinances. They are not suggestions. Your church has refused to grow. Write it. The grace for growth. The grace for acceleration. The gift of men. And while you invite other people to come, don't just tell them, come in the evening. Apostle is in town. That's not a very nice invitation. Encourage them and say, while you come, please write. It's not a, it's not a cinema. You are coming so that your life be changed. Is that, is that all right? May the Lord bless you and may the Lord increase you in the name of Jesus.